Right, today we are going to talk about the ciliary ganglion. Ciliary ganglion is basically ciliary ganglion. Ciliary ganglion is basically a parasympathetic ganglion in uh, head in the orbit and there are two ciliary ganglion in the, one is in the right orbit and other is in the left orbit. Right, as you know what is ganglion? Ganglion means collection of neuronal cell bodies outside the central nervous system right so these are collections of the cell bodies outside the central nervous system which are called ganglion now we go specifically in detail of ciliary ganglion that what is the exact position of ciliary ganglion and what is the purpose of ciliary ganglion basically ciliary ganglion purpose is that this is a parasympathetic ganglion even though through this ganglion sympathetic and sensory fiber also pass but it is only parasympathetic fibers which relay in this ganglion. So it is said to be a parasympathetic ganglion, right, which is concerned with the innervation of intraocular muscle. It is concerned with the innervation of intraocular muscles like constrictor pupillae, dilator pupillae and ciliaris. Is it clear? Now, uh, let's see exactly uh, in the head what is the exact location of ciliary ganglion? Where ciliary ganglion is situated? Let's suppose if I draw a section of the head, right? I draw from here and I'm showing you removing the top of the skull and also removing the brain. And now you're looking at the cranial cavity. Here you have what? Salad Rashika. Salad Rashika, yes, very good. And this is your? Foramen magnum and here lies your these are lesser wing of sphenoid of course interior cranial fossa with that mydal cribriform plate right and uh, your beautiful nose here and ear happens to be here right this is a little orientation of this diagram now I, I, the purpose of drawing this diagram is I want to show you exactly what is the location what is the exact place where ciliary ganglion is present uh, let's suppose we break the bone here because you know in this point at this place in the floor of the anterior cranial fossa right uh, under it there is orbit so if, if I remove the bone from here I cut the bone from here and cut down the bone from here I, you can see the orbit and here is yes your eyeball and the same if I do it over here right and break the bone from here and you can look inside here is also Eyeball. eyeball right and what is here optic this nerve. is optic, optic nerve. nerve very good and here is a muscle yes what is this muscle very good this is lateral rectus this muscle is lateral rectus right so now Ciliary ganglion is, and here is of course, uh, what is here? Superior orbital fissure on both sides, right? Now, ciliary ganglion is situated exactly here, right? Now, what is this place? Ciliary ganglion is present between the optic nerve and original, and what is this? Lateral rectus. It is present between the optic nerve and lateral rectus, right? And it is in the posterior part of the orbit. This is all orbit. It is in the posterior part of the orbit and it is about one centimeter in front of or anterior of medial end of superior orbital fissure. So in one sentence, we can say ciliary ganglion is placed in the posterior part of the orbit about one centimeter interior to the medial end of superior orbital fissure it is pressed it is present bet uh, between the optic nerve and lateral rectus or we can say that it is lateral to the optic nerve and medial to the lateral rectus this is the exact location of ciliary ganglion now ciliary ganglion has intimate relationship with 
two nerves specially number one it has parasympathetic fibers which are coming from third cranial nerve or parasympathetic fibers which are coming from oculomotor nerve right and it has sympathetic fiber which i will tell you later they are coming from uh, superior cervical ganglion right and i will tell you that it has sensory fibers also which are coming from nasociliary nerve right so with two specially with two nerves it is related number one third cranial nerve which is also oculo motor nerve right so we say this ganglion ciliary ganglion is functionally functionally connected with oculomotor nerve because this nerve bring parasympathetic fibers to the ciliary ganglion and topographically topographically or anatomically it is also related with nasociliary nerve with nasociliary nerve because through the nasociliary nerve this ganglion is connected for the sensory fibers right now as i told you it has three types of fibers parasympathetic sensory and sympathetic right so i will explain one by one all the fibers first of all i will explain about the relationship of this ganglion with the parasympathetic fibers with the parasympathetic fiber right now let's draw a diagram and see how parasympathetic fibers reach to ciliary ganglion and after reaching to ciliary ganglion where eventually these parasympathetic fibers go and innervate which muscles right so let's start from here that parasympathetic fibers originate from the midbrain they originate from the midbrain here is midbrain here is your pons here is your medulla and here is your beautiful spinal cord right and parasympathetic fibers take origin from the upper part of the midbrain at the level of superior colliculus right upper part of the midbrain and lower part of the midbrain so these fibers take origin at the see, level of superior colliculus in periequiductal gray matter and these there are two types of fibers present in the third cranial nerve somatomotor fibers these are somatomotor fibers and there is another nucleus here and this nucleus is called adinger westphal nucleus adinger west fall nucleus this adinger westphal nucleus is uh, basically a parasympathetic nucleus actually it is the highest parasympathetic nucleus present in our central nervous system now from here the parasympathetic fibers exit and the go go along the somatomotor fibers of third cranial nerve this parasympathetic fibers uh, are now part of the third cranial nerve or oculomotor now this nerve when it will exit from the midbrain it will approach the cavernous sinus right so let me make cavernous sinus here that this is the back of the cavernous sinus and this is now here is the lateral wall of cavernous sinus what is it lateral wall this is the posterior wall right and lateral wall okay this is the lateral wall right and here it is medial wall of cavernous sinus i'm drawing all the structure on the right side of the head and neck now uh, this nerve will approach the cavernous sinus uh, into the lateral wall and once it reaches to the lateral wall right along with its parasympathetic fibers and it will keep on running the in the lateral wall just below that there's fourth cranial nerve right and below that there is first and second division of fifth cranial nerve right now these uh, parasympathetic fibers and somatomotor fibers they pass through the lateral wall and before they exit they divide into two divisions there is inferior division and there is superior division right and then these divisions through the uh, superior orbital fissure enter into orbit right these parasympathetic fibers which are going to reach to the ciliary ganglion they are going along inferior division they go along inferior division right and now here is 
your celery ganglion and here is your celery ganglion and these parasympathetic fibers now listen it is very important to understand that as these fibers are going there is one branch which is going for what is this from inferior division to medial rectus then there is another branch which is going to inferior rectus then this is branch which is headed for what inferior oblique right actually these parasympathetic fibers go along the inferior division and they go to the branch they traverse up to the branch which is directed for inferior oblique right let me make it a little superior let's suppose this is your spirit now so this is oculomotor fibers going to inferior oblique right now here it is important to understand these fibers parasympathetic fibers uh, which were going to the inferior division and eventually going to the branch to the inferior oblique will as a short route in classical anatomy they explain that this will leave from here and it will enter into ciliary ganglion and these fibers once they enter into ciliary ganglion there they terminate right and from here the post ganglionic parasympathetic fibers will start right so these fibers from a dinger westfall nucleus up to ciliary ganglion these are called preganglionic parasympathetic fibers right. what are they called preganglionic pre parasympathetic fibers right now from here the postganglionic fibers will exit out as short ciliary nerve now they are from here there are about uh, 10 to about 8 to 10 short ciliary nerves which come out of the ciliary ganglion and they enter into eyeball out of this 8 to 10 short ciliary nerves which eventually divide into 15 to 20 short ciliary branches right i will show only two right so i will show two short ciliary nerve one short ciliary nerve here i will show you and other i will show here but how many are there there are basically uh, 8 to 10 uh, short ciliary nerves right which eventually divide into 15 to 20 branches and they pierce the eyeball right so i will make the eyeball here this is your which nerve optic nerve right and uh, here i will show you what is this muscle this is sphincter pupilla it's a circular muscle here and here there is a muscle which is called yes dilator pupilla dilator pupilla it will pull the pupil outward and dilate it this is dilator pupillae right and here it is sphincter pupillae and here is a very important muscle and this is called ciliaris this is ciliaris now we have to see how fibers autonomic fibers reach to these muscles these are involuntary muscles or automatic muscles they are not in your voluntary control right sphincter pupillae dilator pupillae and this is ciliaris the ciliaris is concerned with uh, uh, you can say contraction or relaxation of ciliaris basically control the curvature uh, controls the lens right thickness of the lens right and play a part in accommodation reflex when far objects come near and there needs for need for the lens to be thickened now here it was which nerves short cell nerves now these short cell nerves right these short cell nerves they enter they pierce the sclera the outer layer is sclera inside it uh, there is a vascular layer right here it is called choroid right this is vascular layer in the eyeball which is called 
कोराइड एंड इन साइड द इनर मोस्ट लेयर दिस इज द वास्कुलर लेयर विच इज कॉल्ड यस कोराइड एंड आउटर मोस्ट लेयर इज द प्रोटेक्टिव लेयर हेयर इट इज कॉल्ड सक्लेरा राइट नाउ एंड इनर मोस्ट इज सेंसरी retina then this are all red layer this is the vascular layer this part of the vascular layer is choroid here is cili ciliary body here is the iris iris ciliary body and choroid this is all making the vascular layer in the eyeball right and here if now actually this short ciliary nerves they and pairs the sclera they pairs the sclera and on the posterior part of the eyeball around the optic nerve and they enter into yes space space between the choroid and sclera actually they run on the very delicate grooves in the inner side of the sclera and this space is called peri choroidal space what is it called peri choroidal space so ciliary short ciliary nerves what is this nerve short ciliary nerves short ciliary nerve they run in perichoroidal space and these sympathetic fibers which were these sympathetic fibers preganglionic postganglionic postganglionic these postganglionic sympathetic fibers through the short ciliary nerve they enter here and they move forward right and they give branches number 1 to what is this ciliaris right they get they innervate the ciliaris and then these fibers continue more interiorly and eventually they supply what is it sphincter pupillae right so this was about the parasympathetic fibers related with the ciliary ganglion in a nutshell parasympathetic fibers in ciliary ganglion come from the adinger westphal nucleus in the upper part of the midbrain these parasympathetic preganglionic fibers go along the third cranial nerve they are part of the oculomotor nerve and while passing through the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus as oculomotor nerve exit as superior and inferior dovian these fibers go along the inferior dovian which gives on the way branch to uh, somatomotor fibers to inferior a uh, medial rectus inferior rectus and then uh, this dovian continues as final branch for an inferior oblique parasympathetic fibers are coming along this branch which is going towards the inferior oblique but from there they separate away and these parasympathetic fibers add a short cylinder root they enter uh, they get connected with the ciliary ganglion preganglionic fibers terminate here these are the only fibers parasympathetic fibers which relay in this ganglion sensory or sympathetic fibers just pass by the pass through the ganglion so preganglionic fibers end up here and then postganglionic fibers start from here and they exit through the short ciliary nerves and many of these short ciliary nerve enter into uh, they enter pierce the sclera and enter into perichoroidal space and th uh, these nerve short ciliary nerve also have sensory fibers and sympathetic fiber which i will explain later right now focus on parasympathetic fibers and these parasympathetic fibers as a component of the short ciliary nerve they enter into the uh, eyeball within between the sclera and choroid they move into perichoroidal space they approach anteriorly on the way they heavily supply uh ciliaris muscle and also give terminal branches to the constrictor pupillae i will love to mention here about 95% of these fibers end up into ciliaris only about 5% fibers enter into constrictor pupillae is that clear this was the parasympathetic fibers now we come to sensory fibers right relationship of what is this ganglion ciliary ganglion with the sensory system right basically as i mentioned previously that this ganglion is topographically related with the naso ciliary nerve so you must be knowing here that here is your trigeminal what is this trigeminal ganglion we can show it here that here is your trigeminal ganglion right now trigeminal ganglion is connected with the pons with the sensory root what is this sensory root right and this trigeminal ganglion 
this is a sensory ganglion and the sensory ganglion has three important division. Number one division is, yes? What is this? Ophthalmic division. Second division is? Maxillary division. And another is? Mandibular division. Right? And uh, here is the motor root of trigeminal which goes along with the mandibular division. We will not discuss that right now. Now we will focus really on this division. What is this? Ophthalmic division, right? Uh, actually, here is fourth cranial nerve, right? But uh, I will not go into detail of that, right? Uh, below that, there is first part of fifth cranial nerve. And what is this part? Ophthalmic division. What is this? This is ophthalmic division. And this ophthalmic division, right, along with what is this division? Maxillary division. And this ophthalmic division eventually divided in, divides into three parts. Uh, I will show into another independent diagram here so that you can have a more clear idea about this division right as ophthalmic division is moving like that as it moves forward within the lateral wall it divides into yes three branches there is lacrimal lacrimal nerve and there is yes that it divides into how many branches three branches this is lacrimal and then this is naso ciliary nerve and here it is frontal nerve right so it means when it goes it divide how many divisions there is frontal frontal and there is lacrimal there is lacrimal and there is naso ciliary i will only show the naso ciliary division i mean i'm not showing this one which is going upward I'm not showing this one lac lacrimal which is going laterally. I'm just showing the central. What is this? Naso ciliary branch of the what is this? Ophthalmic <laughs> division of trigeminal ganglion. So this is the naso ciliary. I will remove the frontal also so you don't get confused at all. I will only show you here. Yes, I will only show you. This was our third, so you don't get lost yeah i will show only other branches i have eliminated nasocellular nerve nasocellular nerve here is entering into orbit through what superior orbital fissure let's suppose this is superior orbital fissure right and nasocellary enters into superior orbital fissure between the upper division of oculomotor and lower division of oculomotor nerve. Here the nasociliary is moving within the, yes, orbit, right? Okay, let me show you the orbit here. This is the orbit, okay? This is superior orbital fissure and here is the orbit. Here is your ciliary ganglia, right? Now, what is this nerve? This was ophthalmic division. We have removed the uh, in diagram lacrimal division, uh, lacrimal branch, and also we are not showing the frontal branch. We are only showing the continuation of nasociliary branch, right? Nasociliary branch on the way. It gives many branches. One of the very important connection is that nasociliary nerve give a connection to what is this? Ciliary ganglion. It is connected with the ciliary ganglion. And here I was showing that oculomotor was giving a connection to ciliary ganglion, right? Here oculomotor was bringing parasympathetic fibers. Now we have to see that nasociliary nerve is also connected with the ciliary ganglion. And as it uh, proceeds forward, it gives more branches like posterior ethmoidal. Yes interior ethmoidal and eventually it will end up into infratrochlear nerve. 
Right now, we will not discuss its posterior ethmoidal branches or anterior ethmoidal branches or infratrochlear branches. We are more concerned with the eyeball. So, it gives a very important branch here, and this is called long cellular nerve. What is it? Long cellular nerve, along with the short cellular nerves, which are branches of branches of ciliary ganglion, right? Long cellular nerve, which is a branch of nasal cellular nerve, they also enter into what? Pierce the sclera, they pierce the sclera and enter into perichoroidal space and move forward, right? Now, these long cellular nerves, as they move forward, eventually they will take general somatic sensations from the cornea right from the iris and from the ciliary body so actually general somatic sensations like touch pain pressure sensations like that from the cornea from the iris from the ciliary body all of them can be collected these sensations are the neurons right they will become the part of long cellular nerve and then they can exit out from the eyeball right they reach to the nasal cellular nerve and through the nasal cellular nerve these fibers go backward and they reach to what is this trigeminal ganglion from there the central processes go to the brain stem is it clear now these are long cellular nerves and these are short cellular now what is the relationship between the nasal cellular nerve and the ganglion actually what really happens that these fibers what are these fibers sensory fibers these are sensory fibers these sensory fibers have two ways to reach to the nasal cellulary one way is these fibers go directly through the long cellular nerve other is some of these fibers rather than going through long cellular nerves they actually of course they are collecting from here and they enter into what short cellular nerve they enter into short cellular nerve i will show from here cornea iris and cellular body these fibers can also enter short cellular nerve yes and through the short cellular nerve but their ultimate desti uh, destination is nasal cellular so if if they these fibers sensory fibers from the cornea iris or ciliary body or other part of the eyeball these general sensory fibers if they have entered into short cellular nerve but they will go to where they should go and they will escape from the ganglion through this connection and enter into where nasal cellulary so nasal cellulary was receiving fibers directly coming from sensory fibers from the eyeball now listen sensory fibers from the eyeball now has two root to reach to the nasal cellulary one root is the sensory fibers from the eyeballs through the long cellular nerve enter into nasal cellular nerve other is sensory fibers from the eyeball enter into short cellular nerves and through that they reach to ganglion but without relaying to the ganglion right without relaying without stopping here uh, through a communication between the ganglion and the nasal cellular nerve they jump to the nasal cellular nerve this connection is called sensory root of the ganglion this connection was called parasympathetic root of the ganglion am i clear any question up to this yes so what's the difference between short and long cellular very good question what are the what is the difference between short cellular nerve and long cellular nerve one difference is that that long cellular nerves are long and short cellular nerves are short but another difference is, which is more important, long cellular nerves are branches of nasal cellular nerves, and short cellular nerves are branches of ciliary ganglion. Right? Now, few things common into that: long cellular nerves have sensory fibers, short cellular nerves.